And we're live. Hello and welcome everybody to our first virtually connecting session at OE Global from the Netherlands. I'm Nadina Bonmagd. I'm going to be your virtual uh, buddy for this session and joining me as co-buddy is Christian. Uh, why don't you guys, uh, virtual folks, introduce yourselves. We can start with Autumn and, uh, sorry, we can start with Christian, then Autumn and then Nate and then on-site folks can take it over. Okay, hey everyone. I'm Christian joining you from sunny Hamburg today. Glad to be here. Hi everyone, my name is Autumn Keynes and I'm coming to you from the United States in Green Bay, Wisconsin, snowy Green Bay, Wisconsin. <laughs> and I'm Nate Angel. I'm in um, actually sunny Portland, Oregon, which isn't usually the case. So it looks a little bit like Delft today. <laughs> Nice. And I'm Jenny Heyman. I'm your on-site buddy. So uh, I'm here as a participant in the GoGN pre-conference session. I'm a doctoral student, uh, and it's my great pleasure to be part of this first part of the conference. Oh, ditto. Um, I'm Helen. I'm here as part of the GoGN um, seminar workshops for the two days prior to the conference. And I'm from the Open University, a PhD researcher. So, Abdul Rukshi from Sri Lanka. I'm also a participant with GoGN and also will be taking part in the OE Global as well. That pro? <laughs> so, I'm Bea de los Arcos. Um, for my, I am, I suppose, with, with, with this, I am the GoGN program lead. So, I'm the one who makes them work really hard. <laughs> Or brought us all together. Right. Yes. <laughs> and I'm Catherine Cronin. Uh, my second time at the GoGN workshop. It's wonderful. Judith Breton, uh, among the pioneers of the GoGN. Uh, <laughs> hi. Okay. All right. Hi, audience. Hi. Thank you all for these introductions. We're very, very happy to have you with us. Um, so we're going to get this conversation started. Why don't you tell us about the conference? What have you been doing all day? Bea, you've been saying that you've been having them work hard. So tell us a little bit about that. We, so the whole thing, um, what we do um, with the, the GoGN researchers. So the Go, GoGN mm. is, is um, it's a network of PhD researchers uh, who are doing their, their PhD, their, their research on open education. And we got these people all over the world. Uh, so we're very lucky because uh, once a year, well, during the year, all the conversations happen online because we do webinars and we do a lot of social media. Um, we, we're very lucky that we're funded by the Hewlett Foundation. So we're very lucky that once a year, uh, coinciding with the Open Education Global Conference, we get to fund uh, a group of these guys to come over to get together and and then talk about different things so it's, it's for them it's an opportunity to present their research uh, in, in an informal um, in a very friendly um again you know, it's a very friendly um kind of setup and uh, um so so this guys are going to get feedback on their research but also um what we try and do is discuss as, as, as a group is uh, yes, we're doing research in open education, but also how do we do that research in the open? So how, how are we open practitioners when we're doing research? Well, not necessarily only when we're doing research, but how how are we open ourselves as well? So yeah, so the, the two days are organized, so uh, they get a chance to uh, present the research, get feedback, but there's, there's a lot of kind of work, group, group work, sorry. <laughs> what we do things together. But it's very intense in the sense that we start at nine o'clock in the morning and we just finished right now. Um, and I have to keep them on time because <laughs> you know how these conversations go. You can just, it's very yeah. interesting. So you start one conversation and you could go on and on and on. Mm. Well, this is very much about giving the chance to every single one of them to talk about what it is that they, they are researching. And uh, we've got 14 guys with us uh, coming from Australia, from mm. Kenya, from Ireland, from Canada. Mm. So you can see, you know, it's a great chance to get global. To, uh, mm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's global. the global part. Maybe Catherine, do you, you have just finished your PhD, which is so super exciting to all of us. Is there anything you want to share about that? Well, I mean, last year, I, I've been a member of the network, I think, for two years. So, you know, definitely benefited from virtual participation during all of that time. 
that I attended the workshop last year, which happened to be in Cape Town, because that's where the Open Education Global Conference was. And for me, as someone who was about nine months away from submitting, it was transformative because I connected with other people who, you connect at a different level, people who are maybe um, experiencing similar problems to you in terms of isolation or things about methodology, um, all kinds of things we shared. Um, the, the relationships that begin at the network continue all through the year um, in small groups and large groups on Twitter, through our blogs, all kinds of places. So now I'm um, myself and Chrissy Naranzi as alumni um, actually facilitated one of the workshops this morning, just trying, you know, doing a little bit of problem solving, wasn't it, about challenges and so on. So, so I want to I wanna pass the floor to the, to the newcomers. The, well, Judith, you're very experienced having, yes. having been GoGN for, for since the beginning. Yeah. Sorry, since the beginning, yeah? Oh, well, uh, really, I would advocate that um, uh, anybody who is studying PhD needs to go to This is yes. especially yes. from Africa. Mm -hmm. Our research levels is not very uh, to the standards. But then when you meet such a team where each and everyone has their own way of doing things, you learn so much in, term, in terms of methodology, the using uh, the academic writing language, research language, uh, various approaches through which you can write a research that is open, mm -hmm. that can be shared freely, uh, openly, globally, that you can pick someone else's work and reuse it, uh, repurpose it. It's quite interesting. So Gojin is quite a good network that is really building PhD researchers. Some of us have been in Gojin since 2013 when it was started. And really the growth that I have when I do my presentations, all this I give credit to GoGM members <laughs> because when they challenge my way of presenting, I go and improve it. in the next presentation, I am perfect. And therefore I'm very glad to be a member of GoGM and I recommend others to join GoGM. Great. Penny, we haven't met you. Do you want to introduce yourself and maybe talk about your day a little? Yes, well, it's been a fantastic day. Uh, um, hi, I'm Penny Bentley from Melbourne, Australia. Hello. <laughs> I'm in my final year. Um, I hope to submit my thesis by the end of the year. And I'm in, in a similar position now as Catherine was, I guess, last year. So um, it's just one, just so wonderful to be here amongst people that I've known online for such a long time. Uh, and I'm getting so much advice and help about the final stages of the PhD process and how to write things up and what, what the final journey is like. And for the first time ever, I'm, I'm enjoying actually passing on some of my experiences uh, of methodology, particularly when I'm chatting to, to fellow students here. So it's not only what you get from the network, uh, it's also what you can give, and that's equally as rewarding. So that's uh, one of the big things I found today. So I, I back up what Judith said. I encourage anyone to join. And uh, because we do need uh, openness and open education is a cross-disciplinary uh, field to research. So the more people that we can connect to, the better, I think. Yeah. And how about you, Dorothy? Yeah, Gurjian Open, um, I'm from Sri Lanka and uh, MOOCs and open education. And believe me, open is anyway new for us. And uh, knowing those uh, uh, groups, helped me a lot to benchmark myself and uh, to learn from them a lot because it's open and it's easy. when we read some others they don't particularly open up as such but which uh, you know a group such this they always try to improve us that rather than talking from a critical post you know they're not criticizing but trying to improve us that's really you know that's really helpful I saw. Okay. Um, well, I joined OGN maybe 12 months ago, um, but I think my background, I've always felt kind of networked, if that makes sense, and kind of open. But then having joined GoGN, which is brilliant, you feel supported. But thinking about it, I think what's starting to happen to me is I'm now kind of kind of kind of appreciate the body of knowledge it stands for and the scholarship, and you can kind of appreciate the resources and you can understand the depth of scholarship. And that's part that is now becoming quite well, valuable and important that I hadn't bargained for. And obviously there's a supporting people, but it's that feeling 
a better connection with yeah. with uh, is it a discipline or whatever you want to call it, a body of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. It's, so that's that's what I'm getting from it at the moment. Mm -hmm. I think I learned about it last uh, in Krakow. Krakow. In Krakow, I had done. I was doing a presentation, and Bea was in the audience, and she's like, "Oh, have I got a group for you?" <laughs> <laughs> so that was extremely exciting for me. I'm in year three of a Doctor of Education program, so I need to finish by December this year. Um, and the the fellowship of this um, this group, I think, changes everything about PhD level research from mm -hmm. from me, or you know, doctoral level research. Um, I think there's you know there's a, a kind of status quo that it's you know extremely difficult process, and you're going to run into difficult professors and supervisors who are going to give you a really hard time, and it's going to be horrific and terrible and awful experience. Um, but because of this community, for me, it's it's not that you know I have there are things that challenge me and things that happen in my research that oh make me cry, um, but I know that I have this community to talk with and to get feedback from. Um, so I think communities like this and there I don't know that there are very many communities like this are are shifting the way that PhD studies can happen. We have there are so many more rich ways to to get support. Than just your institution or just your supervisor. So that's that's one of the amazing things for me. I think there's a question in the chat. I mean, okay. Just bear with me because my glasses are made up. Yeah. Anyway, when we get to it, like, this is from Nate. Yeah. I'd love to hear more about what Goji and folks are researching. What yes. are you measuring other than textbook cost yeah. saving? Yeah. <laughs> not one of us here. No, I don't no, say no, we no, have. no, no, I'm not doing that. How dare you? We have one, one presentation, and Natasha is not here, but she's in California. She's actually studying open textbooks. But what I found refreshing from her research is that she is not talking about the impact of using an open textbook on students, as in, do they learn better? Is it just as good as using OER or using a traditional textbook? What she was bringing in, like a new, different perspective, as in, even kind of stepping out of education, involving everyone. So her research is going to be, it's a big issue mm. of here actually. Exactly, it was yeah. fascinating. Yeah, yeah, but it's not, I think, yeah. I mean, these guys can tell you what it is that, that they, are, they are doing, but one of the things that I've always, I just find it inspiring, uh, it, it's not just the, um, the different, it's just not only the different methodological approaches that, that all these guys are employing, but it's like, it's very much where they're coming from and what matters where they are. So. Do this is like what was happening in Kenya or in Ghana in Africa. You know what's it's the difference. What is the difference? Um, why why open education uh, matters in your context? And yeah. What it is that you're building? Um, you do a one liner. Whatever. Yeah. Wow. Where? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm researching um, how to improve professional development for Ontario post secondary educators. So to in order to raise awareness and increase use of OER. So that's, in a nutshell, that's what I'm researching. Oh, I'm looking at open educational practices within the context of networked participatory scholarship. So you all know what this is. <laughs> this is people in higher education or associated with higher education um, using the web to improve their scholarship and hopefully open up um, education. I'm researching on MOOCs, uh, how large scale a group can learn together in a small a group of people, so it's making improving MOOCs to me meet uh, 21st century goals. Penny, how about you? Oh, I'm researching the experiences of Australian teachers who are learning about science, technology, mathematics, um, engineering, and mathematics, so STEM education. Those teachers who are learning about that on the open web or or through open education, and that's K12 spectrum. Oh, right? yes, yeah. that's K12. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so professional learning experiences of teachers. Okay. Well, I'm researching on the differentiation uh, of uh, access, use, and processing of OER materials in the global south. And this, uh, the focus is on the sub saharan Can we use uh, OER to improve learning and teaching within this, uh, the marginalized communities in Kenya? That is basically my approach. And I did a situated study of the uh, use of open educational practices amongst um, academic staff, very broadly defined um, in higher education, at one higher education institution, and really focusing on meaning-making 
decision making and practices. If you want to know exactly what GoGM is now searching, you can go to the GoGM website with so GoGM, so go hyphen GM dot net. It's adapted that says who we are, where we are. So you see how there's a Google map that tells you the geographical span of um, of the network in terms of the PhD researcher. So the PhD researcher would be the core of the network, but around them there's a much bigger group of uh, friends, experts, uh, you know, that offer their support and for money. What you will see if you click on on, on the um, you know into the tabs, it will tell you um, and give you an idea. Um, basically, it's the title of the thesis, but that will give you an idea of what um, you know the, the, the breadth and depth of, of, of the research. And we also do a monthly webinar, right? Yes. So community members are welcome to join that webinar yeah. and, and see what presenters are talking about. It's a rich library of those, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, I'm looking at the chat. So, are there people amongst you who are thinking about doing a PhD or thinking of joining the network? And I see smiles. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Come on. Come on. Christian and I were actually just talking about this right before you guys joined us on site. I just finished my master's in educational leadership like four months ago and he was he was saying and like he was saying that he started his master's and he didn't continue on and he was saying oh i am the one that's telling you to go do your phd and i'm like <laughs> it's definitely a thought it's definitely in the plan and uh funny enough i was just attending a couple of days ago it was an information session by harvard graduate school of education mm -hmm. they were uh, on campus at ac i'm from cairo by the way uh not very sunny today but <laughs> Cairo. um at the american university so they were giving us this information session about their um postgraduate and doctoral programs and they all seem very interesting except that like all of them have to be there and on campus like full-time studies and that might not really be that easy for me to do right now like logistically and I'm currently looking at or researching online programs online PhD programs and trying obviously it's not that easy but trying to see if there's funding available for that so I'm just wondering generally like if you guys has anybody has like has any of you um, done their PhD or is doing their PhD uh, distance or online and like do you have any advice or experience with that that you can share with me? I'd be very very grateful. Well, I've, yeah, my I've spent the last four to five years as a fully online distance student, um, which has been a wonderful opportunity for me. But it's it's can also be a lonely opportunity because being an online student, I'm not immersed in a community, an academic community, so there's uh, no one just to chat to informally all the time and that's the benefits of having this network. So um, I strongly recommend that if you're doing it online, uh, I, I guess universities have different approaches to how they support their PhD students. Um, I do have support but, but I also layered on top of that is this network that takes me around the globe. Uh, uh, to share experiences and I think that's crucial to your success even if it's just getting on Twitter and saying I don't know I'm, I've got a few tears to help me out <laughs> so it's, it's it's emotional and academic support that that this network offers it's really good so I would encourage you to to you be part be of that you're not alone <laughs> that's right you're not alone because supervisors are fabulous but they can't be there all the time and um, they can't be across everything that you're trying to do. Um, and so this network gives us a, access to a, a heaps of expertise. Can I just ask, uh, it's something that I don't know if it's ever been on the GoGM blog, and there are a few people even at this workshop who are doing their PhDs remotely. You know, the university's yes. not even in the country. Mm -hmm. So it might be useful to have a blog post about that. Yes. yes. Just in this room yep. mm -hmm. today. So. No, just based on that, based on just what you just said. Yeah, I'm doing my doctor of education fully online. Yeah. And Jenny, are you? Uh, does your does your school, does your university offer any kind of? Uh, do they have a network themselves? It just it kind of floors me that um, I, I don't think I've ever heard of a university that that has, tries to create a network. And not even necessarily within the university itself, but even amongst a consortium of universities or something. Um, 
the fact that we have things like virtually connecting and we have things like uh, GOGN, you know, it's, uh, it's, it seems like they're missing a big opportunity. My program is cohort based, so I do have a cohort. I have a supervisor, okay. and I have a small group. Now it gets smaller every semester. I now have a group of, of five people with whom I interact very closely. Uh, but my school is, I go to Arizona State University for online, mm. and my school is very K-12 oriented. Uh, and my supervisor is not knowledgeable about open educational resources. So, it, you know, it's I feel a little isolated in that way. And this, again, this group is definitely saving me in that way because there are lots of experts that I can, can rely on and have conversations with. My cohort is great. It's super for me to learn the K-12 perspective um, and the types of research that they're doing and what teachers are going through in the U.S., generally speaking. Right. Um, yeah, so that's a great opportunity for me. I do have a cohort, for sure, in my online learning. But I think at PhD levels, um, there's not as much coursework, typically, and you may not have a big cohort. Does Nate or Christian have a question? I know they're typing away. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, here we go. I was making a sort of private joke in the US about, <laughs> about ASU. Sorry, because... I said ASU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I worked uh, at ASU, actually, Nate, is what happened. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Um, I'm just kidding. I don't think Jenny has a job at Starbucks. Um, <laughs> although she probably drinks enough coffee to, to justify it. No. Uh, I actually gave up on my PhD many years ago now, um, and I was uh, just about, I had proposed my dissertation and passed orals and everything, and decided that I didn't want to have an academic career which I'm sort of regretting a little bit because I really like you guys. <laughs> but uh, I have no intention to have an academic career. I was career. about to say <laughs> PhD and still not get an academic yeah, career today. I'm, I'm a practitioner. I'm an instructional designer. I want to be a researcher. I don't actually want to be a professor. I love teaching, but I, you know, I'm not going to follow a tenure track path. Um, I have a different path. Anybody else? Who else is going to be a professor? Who wants to be that? No, 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 I'm not doing that. Yeah, it's not John. Nobody. <laughs> well, I feel, I mean, I just, to generalize, I would say that tenureship is shifting. Higher education is shifting right it's, now, and tenured positions are probably not going to be very plentiful in the future. So, yeah, planning ahead on that one a little bit. Yeah, I don't think that's where I'm going to go with, with this new knowledge. You know, being a faculty is boring because you know, keep <laughs> teaching and the yes, best in, in, in industry is changing and you know, that so you can use. Out of this group, who has a plan to do a PhD? Who has a big good. plan or did it just happen? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm. Mm. I had a big plan because it, I felt that it was going to empower me. Um, I'm an instructional designer by trade and, and there's a very strong power difference here between a faculty member and an instructional designer that I really objected to. Uh, and so I went intentionally went to the highest level of education that I could accomplish to kind of change that conversation a little bit. Yeah, I did PhD. I'm doing PhD because I love research to find questions and answers. Because when you're doing a PhD, you see things in a different way that a normal person sees things, right? And that's really interesting because it's a philosophical way and kind of uplift the, the way that you live in life. Mm -hmm. Right, Penny, was there some reason you wanted to do a PhD? Well, I, I come from a background of classroom teaching, um, not academia. So I stepped out of the classroom after about 25 years of teaching mathematics and science and um, you know, there are quite a few disgruntled teachers around about their professional learning, especially with this push for STEM education and uh, um, the, the changes in curriculum that Australian teachers are facing. So I was interested to uh, try and bridge that um, practice theory divide as, as someone who is a practitioner and now a researcher. And I'm finding that a, a really valuable thing and I hope I can make a contribution um, when I finish. Mm. How about you, Helen? Why did you do it? I was. <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking? I didn't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. I was actually.
actually looking for a job at Open University advertised for funded PhD position and it spoke to me and I went mm -hmm. along and um, I actually, I was surprised. I, I thought I had a lousy interview, but I actually got, got, got the gig, yeah. yeah. And uh, so here I am. And, um, but the career said that I had put in the work beforehand. So, mm -hmm. and it is part of it. It's just part of a, a serendipitous kind of path. It's not a big mm -hmm. career path, but it's a, an endeavor to kind of make sense of the world that we find ourselves in, I think. Mm -hmm. so, uh, and to kind of share, and to share, and to, to narrate kind of what's happening in the world of um, network and learning and, and higher education as well. You know, just the digital and the network technology is changing society, mm -hmm. it is changing learning, and it is I mean, I only came from City on the west coast of Ireland helping people to read and write. So I'm on a very personal journey, but it's also a journey that's a lot, uh, we're all on kind of to some extent. Mm -hmm. I see, yeah, I see a question from Christian there. We'd be interested to know where we see parallels between research on open ed uh, and other to open things like open science, open scholarship, open access. How does that overlap? Uh, and for us, and maybe doesn't it overlap? I was just turning to someone about that today. Um, I think open, open science helps um, uh, researchers and scientists and practitioners build on each other's work more easily I guess with the dissemination of research findings and um, I think this is helping us um, build on each other's work. Uh, build that will help me just describe it as a body of knowledge. Um, so maybe this is the beginnings of, of building up a body of knowledge in uh, related to open education. Um, is that <laughs> I guess yeah, there would, yeah. we, would yeah. we invite and accept or yeah. be interested in having others who are, who are not doing open education? Um, uh, yes, that, that, is, that would be very interesting. The other thing is that we, we get on this to go back to um, how Goji and Estabit and what are the aims of Goji mm -hmm. and some extent. So yes, we are funded by Hewlett, but we are funded by Hewlett because we told Hewlett that we were going to do it. So when go to and said, you see, if we're going to put it at a very basic level, um, uh, you know, research into open education is, is increasingly, increasingly growing and growing. But, you know, there was a time when there was very, very, very little research. And then we said, even the research, as you said, one of you guys said, you know, the research is very, very limited. And we say, okay, um, let's look at the impact of, of textbooks, uh, open uh, textbooks on, on, on cost, you know. So, if we put it at a very basic level, we, we know what what we need the research for. So it's it's great that we are um, we, we advocate for open education and we talk to people. And, but if we want to bring it to a higher level, so um, say if you're into policy into policy making, or if you want to convince uh, those policy makers or the people who do uh, who have the power to to, to make a decision on, on what's going to happen. Uh, you can't just tell them, hey, I am an open educator and I do this and it's wonderful. No, they need to see the hard evidence. So that's when research comes yeah. in. This, this connects the last two questions for me, and that is exactly that. So I've been teaching higher education for a long time, and I came to the realization that, so I was practicing open educational practices, what I would know for. And I came to the realization that if I stepped out of the classroom, teaching the way I was teaching, no one else would, would do those practices in my faculty um, because there was nothing embedded in the institution, there were no policies, no structures. So I found myself speaking to groups talking about what I was doing with my students and citing other people's research. And I, the reason I did the PhD was because I want, wanted to do a substantive piece of research um, mm -hmm. so that I could understand the situation at my university and move into more yeah. Role is to embed this, and in that sense, open education connects to all those other opens you were mentioning, Christian. So I see it kind of as a key to um, to enable those to a greater extent within higher education. Um, great, super. That's a good round, I think. One of the things that I'm noticing as we're sitting here that that makes me extremely happy is that everyone that you're looking at is a woman. Oh, yeah, yes. that's a total accident. And there are more women in front of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. more women. Here. The minimum having a snooze. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're still 
working. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that really delights me. And that delights me about this community. I don't know what the demographics of our mm -hmm. community are, but I, I would guess that there are maybe a few more women than there are men. But. And, and Jenny, we're all different ages too. Yes. Yeah. 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 Some of us are oldies. Mm. <laughs> Lots of youngies. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do a PhD at any age. <laughs> any age girls. So, you know. We'll age it. Thank you for pointing that out, Penny. I've, I've thought about doing it many times, and sometimes I do feel like I've missed my chance. So, no, uh, no, 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 go no, for it. No, yes. No. When, for me, I, have, I didn't have the plan on when to do it, but I always thought it hoped to come. And mm. so, for me, doing the PhD represented doing the work that I love, the mm. that I love, and having the space and structure mm. and support to do it. So, doing it felt like a real privilege, and now you know, being able to get back into work and use that. So, that's what it has been for me. Yeah, thank you for that experience also mm. into the. Uh, practice, practitioner experience, um, yeah, experiences, uh, fields, previous fields. Yeah. Before we go, can we hear a little bit about the um, about the award? I know uh, GOGM just won this award. Um, was that recognized at the conference? Has there been a an awards uh, ceremony, or uh, can we just hear a little bit more about that? I think um, yeah. um, it's a little bit, so we call it the award, it's the, um, the only consortium, um, the Open Education Consortium, who are bound of awards every year, and they call them the um, Excellence Awards. The, the, the Awards of Excellence. Uh, so there's different categories, so they just give them to individuals, they give them to, um, this year they started giving and they get, uh, mm -hmm. they're given one to kind of a, a student for, um, they do for, you know, the course, the, the project, and it, anyway, there's different categories. And uh, we got, um, I mean, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, we got the award for excellence in the category of open research. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's an award that I've been particularly um, it makes me really proud, uh, not because of the work that I do, because of the work that my team do, but it's because an award that witnesses the work, it, it kind of makes sense. What we do in this, it, it, make, it makes sense. So it's an award for all of us. It's an award for, for, for GoGM, for the network, for every single person who gives their time and uh, so generously because this is, it's about the city. The more you put in, the more you're going to get out. Um, and for me, this work that validates the kind of work that we do. It's not the work that we do as in the support team, but it's the, the work that all these guys do. The work on each other, and being open, being out there, uh, you know, help, helping with with making OGN, uh, what OGN is like, you know, legalizing OGN. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I was, and I think members are deeply grateful for the work that the administrators from the OER Hub, Bea, and Matt's and Martin and Rob, in fact, yeah. do to continue to create these opportunities. And the funding, you know, very grateful for the funding from the yes. Hewlett Foundation. Like those things are critical to the success of this group. So we're, I'm very grateful for that. So, how would somebody find a funded position in open education? I stumbled across it. Honestly. I stumbled across it too. I happen to work for eCampus Ontario and I happen to be privileged to work uh, creating open educational awareness for the entire province. That's, you know, so a that's happenstance. How would somebody find a funded position in open education across the globe? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. See, I know what happens at the Open University. We do have a program uh, where we fund X number of um, um, scholarships, you know, PhD. Scholarships, but um, I am not sure what kind of funding I can remember that other, other universities uh, do. So the only thing, see, I learned, the one of the things that we do is that if, if I find out about any kind of funding, and it's, I always, the call always goes out, so it's always about, you know, the creation of information comes in, so it goes out immediately. Uh, it's oh, 
yeah. yeah, keep your eyes peeled and go to it. Mm -hmm. But I, I came to, I, I got my scholarship and then chose my own question in the, in the research group on the other. So mm -hmm. you can come through it that way too. Um, I didn't come through it in an open education program. So if you, if you have that independence, so you, if you're given that autonomy to choose your own question, you can. Oh, okay, yeah. Just saying, if you have, if you're given some autonomy over the, the your um, research question, you can base it around open education, and that's what I choose to do. It depends very much if you're going to do a PhD. Um, say, if you have the passion. Mm -hmm. But if you can actually make it work so that it's actually related to something that you're doing at work, so it's not something completely different, then it kind of makes things easier in a way. So I don't know how it works. I mean, I was very lucky as well to actually get a research grant to do my PhD many, many years ago, and that that freed up my, my time completely, but at the same time, it was something that was related to my work at the time. So I don't know how it works in terms of um, uh, maybe you kind of have to get something to be able to pay for your registration. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it's different to me. Yeah, it's yeah. Different it's different 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 yes. yeah, I totally agree that it depends on passion and if you're passionate about it you'll do it i mean i think that's basically why i started my masters i was already taking a lot of these online courses and i figured like i was taking online courses for a whole year like i would finish one and start the next one and i was like i just thought that maybe i would do all of that and like a degree i mean i'm already learning and i'm already going to continue yeah. learning and that's sort of why i want to really go for the phd idea is that i'm i plan on taking these research courses i do want to publish i do want to do more research, but I am focused on instructional design. I mean, I'm all for that and I love that. And maybe I will teach, maybe I won't, I'd love to, but like, it's not like that one goal that I have. So I will be taking these courses anyway. So might as well just, you know, get a degree at the end of it. You know what I mean? Exactly, mm -hmm. yes. Um, we probably have time for about one more round of questions. I think maybe six o'clock is a good stop point for us because we need a little bit of rest before the next thing. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Virtual folks, do you have any questions for our on-site guests? It's all pretty quiet. All right, well, maybe that's a good stopping right. point then. Yeah. I was okay. going to just ask one last question. Um, sure. uh, the OE, OE, OE Global, if I have the tag right, um, is continuing, right? So what is the next thing that you guys are most looking forward to that you're going to do there? That's a good question. I I am uh, I have um, what I call my OE fellows, open education fellows. There are uh, six of them total. Five of them are coming here to the conference for their own personal learning. They're doing mini research projects in Ontario with me uh, because we just need more research in our local context. So I'm very excited uh, for them to come. Helen DeWard is one of the OE fellows um, who's very well known and virtually connected. <laughs> Uh, and there are four others who are coming here, and this is the first time that they're coming to this conference. So I'm very excited for them. Um, I'm presenting about my research, and I had the opportunity to practice that today. I'm excited about that, too. Oh, um, I feel like I've only just kind of got out from working out what it is I'm doing. So I'm on a bit of a conference season. Earlier in the week, I was OER 18, and kind of um, trying to understand more about the conversations within the community. This is the first time at OE Global, so again, trying to um, get under the skin of what people actually on the ground are doing. And then next month, I'm lucky enough to be able to go to Croatia, and it's a network learning conference. So I'm interested. <laughs> hey, I can make a little bit of money go a long way. Anyway, um, I'm interested to understand the connection between open and network learning a little bit. And then after that, I have to go home and sit on my sit on, at my desk. To come on, backside, and. <laughs> Right. I'm right. <laughs> Get something under my belt. So that's it. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, two days before I was presenting a research paper at uh, Spain, uh, Canary, Canary Island, Terinci, uh, in uh, I believe the Educon conference, and then uh, this one and OE Google, I have uh, another publication that uh, uh, says about Sri Lanka uh, context of OE. Uh, 
views. So I'm looking forward to present my research over there. Okay. Well, it's hard to think of the future in, in the, <laughs> when you're in the final stages of writing up. Uh, really, my, I just, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, but I, what I am, well, I am sure of one thing that I would like to give back something of, of what I've gained from this um, network. So um, I really tore my hair out over qualitative methodology and uh, if there's any GOG members who need some mentoring or support, um, I'd, I'd like to do that, that for, a, for a while, some voluntary work. Um, I'd find that really fulfilling. So, you know, returning something to the open research community would be my, my short-term goal after I submit. Give me time to recover, <laughs> but it's all good. And what about the upcoming main conference? Is there anything that sessions that you want to see or things that you're going to do that you're excited about? Oh, uh, just excited about meeting meeting people. I think um, this is the first conference focused on open education that I've ever been to because no one seems to come over our way in Melbourne. Um, so I'm just really excited to be here amongst amongst the the excitement and meeting people and um, oh look I can't choose the sessions there's so many I want to go to and we'll um, meet Christian and this one's uh, oh, yeah, I saw your name on the list I saw when that I looked too. through the spreadsheet right. ah so, yeah. good just yeah. <laughs> all right Judith how about you what are you looking forward to in the conference uh, well uh, since I'm in the last two of my country actually Kenya is currently my country is in the early stages of developing all your policies. And I think mean, one important part of this team because I know what it means to uh, promote all, um, open practices for my country, and especially with the focus of uh, uplifting the marginalized communities in regards to accessing quality education. So I want to open that team. That is why uh, my last lack of this uh, and this conference is very helpful in making connections and also seeking for more people in regards to policy development. Yeah, and um, last year was the first OE Global conference that I ever attended, and it was basically like coming to meet all of the key people that I have cited in my work and have learned mm -hmm. so much from. So I'm looking forward to very much the same. And I'll be sharing my work, but and continuing those conversations and finding out what people are, are doing now and, uh, and bringing that forward. So, yeah, really excited. Yeah, that's really exciting to see the people that you often cite <laughs> yes. as, as, as real in <laughs> person. That's like, yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. And it's really cool. I mean, yes. it's, it's six continents. Oh, these are little words. living yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how you there. What do you want to do? Uh, for me, this is going to be, I think, I'm trying to count. I think this is going to be my fifth OE Global. Um, and so I'm very much looking forward to actually seeing old friends <laughs> and meeting new ones. And uh, I'm just really doing a lot of learning and a lot of listening and see what's going on and connecting people and um, see, yeah, feel the excitement. Yeah. It's just, it's truly, and I know David while it's early with Headley when we be able to listen to this, um, <laughs> this is only global, it's a truly global conference. So like it, it's the open education conference where you're going to hear um, what's happening in the global north, in the global south, you know, what's happening, like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, and that's something that I cherish, and that's something that I look forward to. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? This is a good mark to end the live session. All right. And then whoever wants to stay longer, we can definitely have the conversation now. Keep going, all right. Thank I you guys. We're definitely gonna run away. <laughs> Thank you. Have a, Thank have you. a good night in Delft. Thank, Thank you all so much. Thank you very much.